Amen. We are going to see the king. No more troubles, no more crying, no more dying. We will be healed. We will be made new. Wednesday, I was done. I, I was done with my sermon. I, I, I was prepared. And I had uh, illustrations. And, and I'd gotten over the fear of, about talking about submission. In First Peter chapter 3, husbands and wives... I thought. <laughs> and I thought, earlier in the week, I thought, man, I, maybe I should have Bethany as backup, you know, stand by my side while I'm going through this. Um, but on Wednesday night, I, I started having this conviction of maybe I should uh, change um, the the direction that I was going. I heard about the Hopkins and uh, their daughter, and, um, and then the accident and, and, uh, up in the hill country, New Braunfels uh, Church, 13 out of 14. And, of course, uh, Rose and uh, Richard Eldridge in the passing of their daughter. And, and so on Wednesday, Wednesday, I was feeling that conviction, not out of fear of taking on uh, that First Peter passage, um, but just like maybe this isn't business as usual. Um, and I, I know there's a history, there, there's sickness, we've been dealing with a whole lot of things, and you guys have been dealing with a whole lot of things for the last few years. And, um, and so I, on Thursday, it, I just, it was confirmed, and I, um, I felt like we needed to go a different direction. I don't um, have any slides to put up there with scripture. I've got a bunch of scripture that we're going to be going through. Um, if, if you'd like, I can give you a copy of what I have. Just ask for it. If, um, if you want, you can take notes. Um, but I felt like as a, as a family, as, as a congregation, that um, it'd be right to take some time to allow the Lord to, to, to speak to us, to bring healing um, to mourn with those that mourn and to celebrate with those that celebrate. Um, as a family, uh, we, we are called to do that. And, and so it's not business as usual. We're going to take the time today. And I, I'm not trying to rain on our parade, um, but I think it's appropriate that, that we take uh, today to... And, and this goes further than just those three incidents. It. Wow. That's a miracle. Amen. Amen. Good to have you with us this morning. Amen. We, we all have gone through some kind of traumatic event. And, and so the purpose for this morning is, yes, to deal with those issues, current events, the latest things that have been going on, but also for us to take a few moments to look internally. Maybe there's stuff that we're hanging on to. Maybe there's trouble or things that we are troubled by. And allow, I have a ton of scripture because I don't want to give you my opinion this morning. I want the word of God to speak to us. Um, there is no higher wisdom, no, no higher thought than what we get from the Lord directly. And so we'll, we'll be navigating through that. Uh, bear with me. 
Um, Thursday and Friday, um, it, it just, it, it was a heavy burden on me. And, uh, and so, change of plans, not business as usual. Um, having said that, we're going to Matthew 10, 29, 31. You don't have to be a Christian to realize that th there is something wrong in this world. When we see catastrophes, when we see natural disasters, terrorism, all of that stuff, even people that have no connection to the Lord will say, man, there's just something wrong with that. And, and it's true. It's very much true. We are in a broken world. We are um, surrounded by sin all around us, and there are people that do some dumb things that affect us also. Matthew 10, 29 through 31 are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. We have a loving and caring God that knows that this world is broken, that knows that we will be affected by tragedy. And he cares individually for us. He knows us intimately. And knows what affects us. And he is there to heal. We're told that we will face trials. Just a few weeks ago in, in, uh, in our study in Peter... We, we talked about that. John 16, 33, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. When we want to run away, when we want to deal with the pain in our own way, I have said these things to you. These are the words of Jesus that in me you may have peace. He wants us to draw near in those times. In the world, you will have tribulation. You will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Hebrews 2, 14 through 17. I hope I can make it through this message. <clears throat> Since therefore the, ch the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who, was, who has the power of death, that is, the devil. And deliver all those who through, for, through fear ha of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. He's talking about all of us. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the, in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. He took on flesh. And he knows the things that we face. He knows our troubles intimately. He knows our temptations. Hebrews 4, 15. 
For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. But one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. We we serve a Savior who is well acquainted with the things that we go through. We often talk about Right? His sovereignty. But he also knows having experienced it in the flesh. And he is merciful and he is loving and Right in the middle of our trials, he is there. If we go toward him and not away, there is a peace beyond measure, beyond understanding that in the middle of the storm that we can glorify his name. When trouble comes, when others despair, that we can praise him in the middle of that. Our troubles aren't over. We are still in this world and we will continue to face tribulation. We will continue to face trials, but he is there. And he grieves with us and he mourns with us. It's not just from a distance. He has intimate knowledge of the things that we go through. This world is broken and sinful, and it goes all the way back to Genesis. Romans 5, 1, 5, 17, I'm sorry. For if, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Through Adam, this world is broken, but through Christ we have been delivered. God does not cause someone to text and drive or drink and drive or take our loved ones. It is sin, it is brokenness. These bodies are breaking down. There is disease. That is a part of this broken world. There is selfishness in this world that wants to look at that phone when you should be paying attention. God does not give us sickness, these bodies are corrupt. That was not the way that God created this world. Sin had that effect. And we know that there is something wrong. We can see that there is wrong. Babies dying in third world countries because they don't have something to eat or something to drink, or what they drink is polluted. There's something wrong with that. And we want to fix it. 
right? And we're going to do our part to feed, to be with those that mourn, to help those that need help. But this world is broken. What we long for is glory. Glory with him. To be in his presence. To be without pain. Romans 8, 18 through 25. For I consider, this is Paul talking, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. This is Paul. He got beat up. He got thrown out of cities. He got thrown in jail. And he is saying that what I go through here and now, man, it doesn't even compare to the glory with him. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. Creation waits. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it. In hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory, glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. Not only do we know that there's something wrong, creation knows that there's something wrong and is eager to be delivered. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we see what the Spirit of God does. We've been witnesses to miracles. When we shouldn't be getting a phone call that everything is all right. When the evidence that you see before you would say, wow. We've seen the Spirit of God at work. Grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for Adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. We see something wrong. And we long for glory. We long for the end of violence and sickness and death. We have we have to go through these things while we are still here. And there is opportunity, even in those situations, for God to do a work. We are being shaped and molded if we allow to do God to do a work in us. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. I should be joyful in the middle of my trials? For you know that the testing of your faith produces stead steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing." The stuff, what James is saying is that the stuff that we go through, is working inside of us to get us to perfection and being complete.
lacking in nothing. In Titus chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We long for that. We wait on that. That we can see him. That we can be with him. Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. First Peter, verses 6 and 7. In this you rejoice, though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials for a little while. Peter is saying, this is temporary. When we look at the timeline of eternity, it just keeps going, and we are but a dot on that timeline. This is temporary, Peter is saying. He's reminding us. It's just a little while. You have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith. Nothing is wasted. More precious than gold. It is more valuable than gold. The genuineness of our faith. Though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The genuineness of our faith will get us to a point where we can praise him and glorify him and bring him honor. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Can you... I know probably the majority of you have seen the, the Passion of the Christ, and that probably falls short of what it really was like. And, and Jesus is saying that that tool for torture, you got to pick yours up too. He's not saying, come on to the easy life. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. We have to follow his lead. Second Timothy 3, 10 through 12. You, however, have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love. This is Paul speaking to Timothy. My love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings. Timothy has witnessed all of this. My persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra, which, which persecutions I endured, yet from them all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. 1 Peter 4 and 12. Suffering as a Christian, beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes. 
when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Philippians 129, For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him but also suffer for his sake. We get to take part in the suffering. That is contrary to our understanding that we get to suffer. It has been granted to us. Second Timothy. One eight. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in the suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Now, it's not anything that we can just white knuckle through. We're, okay, I'm going to suffer and can't do it on our, on our own. By the power of God. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be sad. To have questions. But we need to be careful to not sin in our anger. James 1, 19 through 21. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. We may want to make things right ourselves when something goes wrong. Oh, if I could just get a hold of that guy... For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. We have to submit to his word. Isaiah 53 and 3. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. He knows what it is to be rejected. He knows pain. He knows suffering intimately to lose a loved one. Our Savior is well acquainted with our grief. There's a quote from Charles Spurgeon. Our Lord's lament gives us an insight into the great tenderness of his character. He grieves with us. He mourns with us. He cares for us in the middle of our trials. His hearty desires for our good. We see that in his character. Romans 8, 28 through 30. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. All of these things that we see, God can use for our good. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. 
Is there meaning in tragedy? Yes. The good that Paul and that Spurgeon are talking about, it's not getting what we think we deserve. The good that Paul and Spurgeon are talking about is that he is molding us into the image of his son. And he wants us to be satisfied in him. So it's okay. It's okay to ask the questions. It's okay to be sad. It's expected for us to mourn and not just brush it aside. It's expected for us to grieve. But allow the Lord to minister, to go to the depths where pride and sin linger, where we are holding on to our ways. It should be done this way, and this is the way the world should run. Allow the Lord to dig down in there and heal and mold and change us to the image of his son. And that we can long to be with him, long for glory with him. And he would change us to the point that we only get satisfaction in him. These are difficult, difficult times, um, and the, the subject matter is difficult. I'd, I'd rather speak on submission, actually. Take some time. I urge you to take some time and just think over it, process it. Maybe it hasn't affected you. You haven't really thought about it. There was an accident. Oh, man, there's always accidents. Think on those things and allow God to do a work. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. And God, we need you. You are a good and gracious God. And Lord, I ask for forgiveness when we don't understand or when we forget that you are so gracious and so loving. Allow us to have that perspective that we are allowed to take part in the suffering. That is not our nature, Lord. We want to run from suffering, run from pain, and run from the fiery trial. Lord, help us to see things as you see them. Give us wisdom. We love you, Lord. And we thank you that we can meet here this morning and be in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen.